Understanding the concepts of simple and compound interest is essential to becoming successful with money. Hello and welcome to Practical Personal Finance, where you get the information you need to understand and succeed with money. In the next few minutes, I'm going to help you understand how both simple interest and compound interest work. I'll give you examples, I'll show the math that goes on behind the scenes, and I'll tell you about some real-world applications for each. Stay tuned. Before I start throwing numbers around, I thought it would be a good idea to briefly discuss the concept of interest to make sure we're on the same page. If you're already comfortable with the concept of interest, skip ahead to this time in the video. Otherwise, here goes. Interest is a fee that you pay someone or some entity for the privilege of borrowing their money. The cost of interest is dependent on the amount borrowed and the interest rate. Some factors that influence the interest rate are how much you're borrowing, what you'll be using the money for, and of course, your personal history of paying back the money you borrow on time and in full. If you're borrowing a large amount of money and you have a spotty history of paying that money back, you can expect to be paying a lot of interest. That is, if you can find someone willing to let you borrow money at all. But if you're borrowing a small amount of money and your record is stellar, it'll be easy to find a lender and the interest won't be as bad. Now that we're on the same page when it comes to the concept of interest in general, let's talk about the concept of simple interest. And we'll start with an example. Let's say I borrowed $30,000 in order to buy a new car. The interest rate on my loan was 6% per year and that I was going to pay that loan back in full with interest one year from today. To calculate the amount of interest I would owe, I start with the amount I borrowed, $30,000, then multiply by the interest rate, 6% per year, then multiply by the length of time, one year. The result is $1,800 in simple interest. Pretty straightforward. Give this video a thumbs up if this is all making sense so far. Thanks. Now, the way that interest on a car loan or a student loan typically works in the real world is that it's calculated and paid on a monthly basis. So when you're calculating the amount of interest that's due each month, you need to account for the fact that it's roughly 1 12th of a year. Using the numbers from earlier, again, we'll start with the amount owed, $30,000, then multiply by the interest rate, 6% per year, and then multiply by the length of time, 1 12th of a year. The result is $150 in interest due that month. But wait, what if my monthly payment was $650? If $150 pays the interest for that month, the remaining $500 would go toward the principal, making the new balance on the loan $29,500. To calculate the interest in the following month, I would take $29,500, multiply it by 6%, then multiply it by 1 over 12. The result is just $147.50 in interest. As I work toward paying off that loan, the portion of my monthly payment that goes toward interest decreases over time and the portion that goes toward the principal increases. Next, let's build on the concept of simple interest as we talk about the concept of compound interest. And again, we'll start with an example. Let's pretend I deposit $30,000 into a high yield savings account at my bank, which earns a whopping 3% interest per year. Remember, when we deposit money in the bank, we're essentially allowing the bank to borrow it, which is why they pay interest on deposits. That interest is calculated and paid on a monthly basis, just like earlier with the car loan, except this time it's the bank paying me instead of the other way around. I start with my deposit, $30,000, multiply by the interest rate, 3% per year, then multiply by the length of time, 1 12th of a year. The result is $75 paid in interest for the month. At this point, you're probably thinking, Andrew, that's just simple interest again. I thought we were talking about compound interest now. Don't worry, here's where compound interest comes into play. My account with the interest added now has a balance of $30,075. The following month, I'm not only going to earn interest on the initial deposit of $30,000, but also on the additional $75 in interest I earned in month one. I'm now earning interest on the interest, also known as compound interest. The second month, I'm earning $75.19 in interest. The third month, I'm earning $75.38 in interest. In the 120th month, 10 years down the road, I'm earning $100.95 in interest, all without depositing another dime out of my own pocket. 
That's compound interest at work. To calculate how much compound interest you'll earn over a long period of time, there's a pretty complex looking math formula you can use, which I cover in another video I made dedicated entirely to compound interest. Or you can simply use the free compound interest calculator on the investor.gov website like I usually do. Link to that calculator is down below. It's easy to see how powerful compound interest can be when applied to something like saving for retirement. When you're depositing money on a regular basis and earning an even greater return on investment. But the X factor will always be time. The more time compound interest has to do its thing, the more wealth it can generate. Special thanks to Mana for suggesting I make a video on this topic. Are there any other topics related to personal finance you'd like me to cover? Let me know in the comments. To learn more about the differences between variable and fixed interest rates, click right here. And if you're not yet a PPF subscriber, click right here. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Shear, and I'll see you next time.